Hey everyone, this is Angie at Stampin' with Amari. Welcome to my channel. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications each time I upload a new video. So I've had a lot of requests for the ink blending on acetate because I showed a few samples in the last one when I did the vellum. And so these are two, I'm going to show you like a few different ways that you can do this and get kind of a different look. I saw someone on YouTube share it and she was foreign. She didn't speak English. So it was really hard for me to understand how she did it, but I just followed how she was doing it. And that's how I did my first one, which was this one right here. And then I started playing with it in different ways, using it different ways. And then I got this different technique. I really, really like this look. But it's all up to you how you want to do it. There's different ways. You just need to sit and play with it because it's a very touchy kind of surface that it's real slick. You know, window sheet is real slick. And by the way, I did use Stampin' Up! window sheet on all of these. So... Um, I don't know if you'll get different results with cheaper window sheet or window sheet that's not as sturdy as Stampin' Up's is. So just give it a try and play with it and see what you come up with. But the results are so pretty. I'm going to show you a few samples because I just kept playing with this. It's so fun. And this one I used our Butterfly Wings dies for this. And I actually had a piece of the vellum left and I, I just glued the butterfly to the vellum and you can see it's the same um, kind of, it looks kind of like stained glass. It's turned out really, really pretty, that butterfly. So I'm going to share that today. <clears throat> I already made another butterfly out of some leftover vellum, but look at how pretty it turns out with that vellum behind it. So if you didn't see that video, I'll link that um, in the description or in this video somewhere because you'll need to know how to do that to do the butterfly. And then um, I just used our dragonfly on this one, which is, this is from the dragonfly garden. And I just colored um, him with my blends. And then I just used some uh, Versamark and some of our white emboss for the sentiment that says life is better with a friend like you. I love that sentiment. And that sentiment is from this Peaceful Moments. And then the sentiment, Follow Your Dreams, that I used here is from the Through, uh, Through It Together. These are both great ones for sentiments. And I did get both of these because they took my itty bitty greetings and birthdays away. So these are really comparable to those, especially this one right here. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to show you here just a few more. Uh, let me grab a piece of our basic white so I can hold it up against it because it's really hard to see it if it's not up against the white. One thing that I recommend is letting it dry very thoroughly before you put it on a card. I left a couple of these overnight and it really made a difference. So this is one of the techniques. You can see you can get so many different looks. And I'm going to show you a few of these because I was playing with different types of things to get these. So this is the one I really like that I used on that other card. And these are actually two different ways that I have did that. And then there's this one. There's these two right here. So you can get different looks using different things. And I'm going to just show you that here in just a second. So it's basically going to be showing you this technique. I will put a card together really quickly at the end. I'll do like the butterfly one at the end. But um, I'm going to show you basically this technique because it's worth showing you the different ways to do it. Now you want to have something <laughs> to cover your area because it is a little bit messy you can see I still got it on my hands but you do need alcohol you need the isopropyl alcohol and you need at least in the 90 percent so 90 percent or higher because it won't work if you don't use that we're using our Stampin' Blends and I'm using a bunch of different colors that I just picked out here and we'll just mix them and see what we get on different color combinations. Also, I have a little dropper and 
I'm using some cotton balls too. This is another way I'm going to share with you. And then I'm also using one of our larger stamping blocks. And I have a larger one, but this is the one that worked better for me. And then you're going to need a heat tool because it's best if you just dry it and use it on the low speed if you're going to use it because it just works better that way. So the first one I'm going to share is how I first learned how to do it. This one's a little bit more touchy and, and you got to just be really careful. So we're just starting with our blends and I'm going to put them on here. I'm going to just start with two different colors. So let's do this and this one is the polished pink, the dark, and then this is the dark Highland Heather. So I'm just starting with two of the colors and just randomly put it down like that. I'm going to use my little mister here and this is got, whoops, I need to fill this. It needs to be full of alcohol because you're going to use quite a bit. So let me grab the alcohol here and fill that up. Oops, I'm getting it all over. So this is just our little Stampin' Up! spritzer. Always have a little paper towel with you because you need that. <laughs> and then we're just gonna spritz, spritz this. And you wanna spritz it pretty good. And then you're just gonna start, take it, and you're just gonna start tapping it on here. And you can move it around a little bit if you want to get a little bit of movement in it. But I find it best if you just tap it down. And this is going to give you a little bit of a lighter look depending how much you put on there. So I'm just going to um, leave it like that. Let it dry for a minute. We're going to clean this off. Because you want to clean it off after the colors that you use. Um, let's do, I see, I, I think I'm going to put a little bit more of the, the Highland Heather on there. I'm going to use some Bermuda Bay. And this time I'm not going to spritz quite as much, but you want it, you want it to be like runny. So then you're going to just start tapping it in different areas. Just hold it just above and then just start tapping, tapping it. You don't want to go too crazy with um, rubbing it around because you don't want to mix the colors. You want the colors to stay separated pretty much. All right, and you can't hardly see anything. I know you can't see it yet, but when I put paper behind it, you'll be able to see it. So I want to add, I'm going to spritz this because I want to get off that color. Just to clean it off, you just need to spray it with the alcohol. And then let's add, I don't know, let's add a little bit of this Dark Knight of Navy. I'm just going to add a little bit of that and, heck, I don't know, let's, let's go for this Dark Pale Papaya. Just try out a bunch of different colors and see. We're going to spritz it again. That's why I told you when I told you about the other one, this is a little bit more temperamental and a little bit harder um, to do. But it's, it's worth it and it's a lot of fun to do just to see what you're going to get. If you don't think you got enough, just spritz it and then pick up the other color. But... And this is gonna this is gonna be a little bit lighter. This is a different bit of a technique on this. So I'm gonna let that dry. That's all I'm gonna do on that one because I don't want to go crazy on it and I don't want to mix my colors. So that's all that I'm gonna do on that one. I'm gonna get my heat tool and I'm gonna dry it so I can show it to you. And it dries really fast. You don't want to overheat it either. So let me get my piece of white there. And that's 
what you're going to get. Something like that. So just play with it with your colors. If you want to go back and add, like I would go back and add a little bit more pink. Probably in here, don't overdo it, but add a little bit more pink. You can pick up whatever colors that you like. I think that's really pretty though. And if you want to do the whole sheet to cover the whole front of your card, you'll need, I cut them at five and a half by three and three quarters because I wanted a little bit of room for my sentiment at the bottom. But see that? Isn't that pretty though? I mean, you can go crazy with colors. Now, here's the other technique of doing this. So I'm going to take this piece and we are going to start, I am going to start with dark Bermuda Bay. I keep forgetting what I got out here because I'm just grabbing. And we're just going to start with like two colors. So we're going to do that and then I think I'll do the dark polished pink. Depending where you want it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm, my alcohol is in this little jar. You can either use a dropper or I'm going to just use the end of this because it's kind of like a dropper. And then you're just going to start dropping ink on here. This is an easier way to get your color and to get it a little bit more dramatic, I would say. But I really, really like this look. And just lay it down. And now what I'm going to do is grab my heat tool, put it on low. If you have a low setting, you want it on low. And then just hold it above there. And you can move it a little bit. But it's going to, like I said, it, don't hold it too long because you don't want to warp your window sheet. But it's going to dry really quick. Sorry if you can't hear too well, but I, I need to talk kind of when it's over. So this is what you got so far. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the Dark Knight of Navy. I'm going to put some in here. And again, I'm going to grab that. And we are going to start adding it. The little drops. It depends the look that you're going for, whatever you like. And then I'm just going to, another thing you can do here is if you have one of these, this is, I think is a Tim Holtz, but you can just squirt these like that. And spray them out. It gives it a little bit of another look. You can also do it with your heat tool. It'll move it around a little bit. And one more color I'm going to add to it. So which one should I add? I got the Bermuda Bay. Let's add a little bit of this here. And we're going to add a few more drops. And again, if you don't have one of these, you can use like anything that will squirt out air would probably really work. I just like how it gives it like a little bubble kind of look to it. And then let's go ahead and dry that. But you can see I'm not holding it right on top of it. I'm holding it above it and it dries very, you can see it evaporate. So, so here's that look. So isn't that cool? Oh my gosh, I think it's so neat how you can get different looks on this. Um, I think I'm going to add a little bit more like down here so that I'm going to use this one for the butterfly card. 
So I'm going to add just a little bit. I think I'll add a little bit more blue here. And probably, probably this polished pink. One more time for that. So like I said, you can just keep adding. You can just keep adding. You can do the whole surface of the card. It's just all up to you. We're going to heat this one, dry it. So let's see. Yeah, I think that's what that's going to be great. We're going to use this one for the card. And then I got one more little piece. And I'm going to show you what I did with the cotton balls. So again, we're going to just add different colors. I'm going to do the whole thing on this one because we're going to add all the colors at once. I really like this dark night of navy in there i don't know it just adds some i using i think pretty much all of the dark colors in these blends so we are going to grab our cotton ball i'm going to open this and i'm going to grab i'm going to saturate one side of this and then you're just going to start touching the paper because as soon as the alcohol hits those alcohol, um, the ink, it's going to start spreading. And then I'm going to take my little blower and we are going to move it around a little bit. And you can really like, you can move this a lot or a little bit. And then I'm just going to dry it with the heat tool real quick. And then you're going to get that kind of look. So I'll show you all three. Let me wipe this so I don't get stuff all over my paper. Cover this alcohol because I don't want to smell it. <laughs> So there's there, and then where's our other one? Right there. So can you see all the different ways, that different looks that you can get on this? Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. You just have to play with it. Just be real careful that you don't overheat your window sheet. And if you can move this around as much as you want. Um, you can... Oh my gosh, try all different colors. It's really, really fun. I did do, I showed you this one. This is a, I used the green. I used the, the soft succulents, the light and dark, and then I used a, a yellow on this one. I think it was Daffodil Delight. So look at the colors. I mean, you can use, this is going to be really cute. I haven't got, I ordered a fish stamp set, and I thought this would be really cute for that. I haven't gotten it yet, though. So let's go ahead and make a card. So I'm using a regular five and a half by four and a quarter card base. I think I did cut this right. Yep, I did. So this is um, this piece was again. It's five and a half by three and three quarters. This is how I attach this. Just like I do the vellum, I'm going to use my wet glue, and I'm going to put it on this little sponge that I have. This is a Stampin' Up! sponge. I cut it in fours, and you're just gonna start tapping it on here. I put most of it underneath the ink. Make sure you got the right side down, because one side has the ink where you inked it, and the other side is the side that is the shinier side. So be careful when you do that. And I'm just going to put a little bit on the edge here. And we are going to attach this. I'm going to leave a little space on the bottom for the sentiment. So I'm going to put this one up at the top. 
But doesn't it look so beautiful up against the white, the basic white? It's so nice and white. And then, of course, I told you how I did the butterfly. I just cut it out with the uh, Brilliant Wings dies. So these are the Brilliant Wings dies. And I used this large one. Cut that out in the basic black. And then I had a piece of vellum left from my last project. And I put the vellum behind it and just glued it and cut it down cut it down so I'm going to use that for here and let's see which one I hope I can fit this one on the bottom I don't know life is better with friends like you I think I better use the other one on here this one says follow your dreams and I'll use the moment memento black for that I could have stamped it first and I probably could have fit it because I have a little bit of space at the top there so we are going to just do the follow your dreams down there. It does fit with the butterfly though. And then we're just going to attach this right here. And I'm going to use glue dots for that. Y'all have to try this. It is so much fun. You do get a little bit of inky, but it's so worth it. <laughs> I have been playing like a couple days with this, just trying different ways and to try to make it easy, easier, as easy as possible. And I think just laying down, getting this effect, I really like that, just dabbing it and drying it and dabbing it and drying it. That's easier than the other one where you have to keep on, uh, you use the block for that, or acrylic block. It's a, this is so much easier, and I really like the look of it. So there you have it. So I hope you enjoyed it, everyone. I really love this, and it's so fun to do. Give it a try, because you can get some really, really pretty results from it. All right, everyone, if you need any supplies, you can shop on my blog at Stamping with Amore. Have a blessed day, and I'll catch you in the next one, everyone. See you later. Bye.